Hi, everyone. Welcome to our first ever masterclass design series with our favorite designer, Jenny Thomason. Welcome, Jenny. So glad to have you. Thank you so much. I'm so happy to be here. And hi, everyone out there. Yeah, it's a a crew full of uh, everyone at details, all of our girls who work in the office and sales and support are so excited for today because this is for the first time for all but one of them, the first time they've ever designed any flowers. So be forgiving to us, Jenny, on uh, our skills here. Although I, I've been doing this a long time, so I'm expecting a lot from myself and the pressure is really on, I have to say. <laughs> You'll do great. You all will do great. That's awesome. Yeah, we thought this would be really fun to share. Um, our our topic for the month was avant-garde design. And who better than to bring an actual come-to-life moment than Jenny Thomason of STEMS out of St. Louis. And I know you work a lot with out of Dallas, too. But um, any chance you could introduce yourself for anybody who might not recognize you? Yeah, sure. Um, so my name is Jenny Thomason. I am from St. Louis. I started STEMS for us in St. Louis 15 years ago from the ground up. So I'm very comfortable with the business world and how to get all that going and how much work it takes. And we did a lot of weddings at STEMS. And we built that business. I since have redeveloped another brand, which is Jenny T Floristry. And that is really just my creative side, going out doing speaking engagements, teaching workshops, and then started an institute in Dallas, Texas. You are such a rock star, and I know that all of the designers that are joining us are just so thrilled to see what you're going to create. And you have like come up with a design concept, and we kind of have collaborated. We've added this design into details. We've shared it with all of you. So hopefully you went out and collected all of the items that Jenny requested that you have. And if you're not using details just yet, you can create these really great recipe sheets that all of our designers printed up in the office. So we were, this was really fun for us to collaborate with our wholesalers uh, to bring us all this product today. And we had to make a few substitutions, but um, I'm just excited to, to learn something from you today as is everybody on the call. So if you are joining us and you want to participate, please put your cameras on so we can see you designing along with us because we think that would be really, really fun just to see how everybody um, brings together these designs. So without further ado, I will turn it over to you, Jenny. <laughs> Thank you so much. So we are encouraging everyone to ask questions too. Um, we have a lady who's manning the computer. <laughs> I don't think she's That's designing. Brandy. Brandy. <laughs> Hi, Brandy. Brandy is manning the computer. So if you guys have questions, feel free to raise your hand or type them in. And um, everyone at Details too, if you guys have questions, we can probably unmute you so you can holler over. So what we're going to work on today, what we collaborated on was a armature style bouquet. And I'm going to be using Curly Willow, but I wanted to show you guys without an armature, this is kind of like the before. This is what bouquets we, we typically see, right? Beautiful, really luxurious, wonderful texture, great color palette, hand-tied bouquet. So that's pretty common, but when we talk about avant-garde design, we talk about something that's different, something that's unusual, something that's unexpected. So we're gonna be throwing an armature into the mix of all of this. So our armature is gonna be made out of curly willow. If everyone has their curly willow, you should also have bind wire. Bind wire is that paper covered wire. And what you wanna do is you wanna cut those pieces of bind wire into little sections. Can you see that? Just a couple inches long. So we wanna make sure we have our bind wire ready to go, cut into pieces. And we have our curly willow next to us. Um, as well as all of our other flowers. So we should have our roses, couple different types. I had to sub out my iris for calla lilies because we just have to sub things sometimes. And so the texture is very similar. It's a nice smooth. Yeah, you sub that too. Yeah, yeah I got my tulips, which is great. Um, and then my wax flower, but we want to prep our material. So before we even get started building our armature, if you haven't already prepped your material, we want to go ahead and do that. So our rose is going to be the first one that I'm going to show you. And you're just going to pull those leaves 
straight down off the stem. So you just have a nice clean stem. And if there are thorns on here, you can use a knife and you can just cut those thorns off or you can use just your fingers and just pop those thorns off. But we want a nice clean stem. And then our tulips, I always take down this bottom leaf and I pull that off, kind of rotate it, pull that whole thing off. But the bottom of the stem is kind of jagged. It's not as clean and pretty as it really needs to be for bouquet work, especially, or any kind of structure work that you're building. You want all your material to just be nice and neat and professional. So I go on that stem with my knife and I just clean all that up. So it looks nice and pretty and it's easy to design with. When we're wrapping with our ribbon, we don't see any chunky parts or any loose foliage hanging out there. So prep all of your material. And then when you're building your bouquet, you don't have to stop and prep it anymore. So that's a, a tip whenever I'm building bouquets, I get everything laid out and ready in front of me. And I make sure that I have a piece of tape pulled or I have my wire pulled. So by the time I'm done, I can bind it off and I don't have to use like teeth or anything. Uh, from Natalie, please send it to me. Oh, somebody's asking a question. Yeah, um, Jenny, I was going to ask you, are you one of these florists who uh, neatly throws your trash into the receptacle or are you one of these designers who throws it all on the floor? No, I use the bin. Yeah, for sure. That comes back from my, um, you know, running the flower shop world and trying to keep my cost as low as they possibly could. And I always thought, I'm paying the designers to throw trash on the floor and then I'm paying the designers to pick up the trash that they threw on the floor. <laughs> so it became trash cans by the design bench and that's how everyone designs. Unless we're doing really big installation pieces where it's just not possible to carry a trash can by you. <laughs> but yeah, I'm a clean designer. I know, I forgot my trash can, so it's all on the floor. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't have a trash can here because I'm coming to you from my apartment in St. Louis. So I don't have any of that. <laughs> so it's on the floor. Don't look around. Um, all right, so we're gonna start with a couple pieces of curly willow. And what we're doing here is we're just gonna be building a base and I'm just gonna lay these on the table, just kind of haphazardly. And wherever the curly willow joins together, so like this piece, I'm gonna cross over to that piece there. I'm gonna take a bit of that bind wire that we pre-cut and I'm gonna bind that together. So I'm gonna twist it like a twist tie. So I'm gonna twist it once. I'm gonna twist it twice to make sure that it locks it in and then three times just for good measure. So three twists on each one. So then I have these two pieces, that one piece is connected. I'm just gonna pull him down to wherever and I'm gonna twist him on. So what we're doing for this is we are creating a base in which we will feed our flowers through to create our bouquet. If you got fresh curly willow, it's very pliable so you're gonna be able to bend these tips back up to create some really interesting form. But this is where everyone's gonna have something that is completely uniquely their own, which I find fascinating when I teach workshops because everyone gets the same product and nothing looks the same. So be as creative as you want to be with this. So are we wanting just to connect like loose ends together? So you're creating more of like, like this together or I guess it's really flat first. Okay. We're just gonna go flat and, and build a bunch of pieces flat. And then once we get it to about the size that you feel comfortable with, some people design a little bit more petitely than other people. So whatever size you like. And then at that point we can take little tendrils like this one from the very end I could take him all the way over to where I like him and I could twist him on just for some interesting form. Okay. Good question. So you are an AFD designer and this isn't off our script. So I'm just going off the, off the cuff here, Jenny. <laughs> and I know I have watched you compete in a lot of different competitions and um, part of the thing that I find so fascinating is there are so many like rules as far as floristry is really concerned. And when, you know, I was designing before when I would do my weddings, like obviously I would just make it pretty, you know, if it was pretty, that's what I liked. But I know in AIFD, there are so many different rules as far as line goes or shapes or what your, you know, textures you're kind of using. Do you have a, a intention in mind or do you pay attention to all those things as you're designing or... 
That is a really good question, actually. Somebody asked me that not too long ago. And um, they wanted to know if I was really organic with the creative process or if I was very, very structured from the beginning concept. And I cannot say that I'm very structured from the beginning concept. I have an idea in mind just like this. Um, there's a procurement list, there's a color palette, there's an overall aesthetic. But after that, once I get going, I kind of just follow the lead of where I am at the space at the moment in my mind or what the flowers are telling me to do or um, creatively where I feel. So I'm a little bit more organic in my approach, but there are the principles and elements of design, as you mentioned, AIFD. Um, we follow those rules for sure, every time we design something. But I also think that once you know the rules, then you can know that you can break the rules a little bit. And that's okay. where the avant-garde kind of comes from. The, you know, the unexpected. We should have line, but can we have a really crazy line that we never would have thought of? I think that's when floristry gets really exciting. Yeah, for sure. So what is your definition of avant-garde? What do you think, what, what does that mean to you? I think it means something that's unusual, something that is experimental for me. Um, I always use a phrase creating unapologetically because I think that's really, really important. And I love to give the advice that even if you do just something for five minutes a day, you're going to be feeding your creativity. Sometimes we can have hours, right? But it's really nice to just do something every single day for your creativity. Because who said that you can't use creativity up? The more you use it, the more you have. Who said yeah. that? I think oh, is that a trivia? Anybody that knows the answer can respond to that. <laughs> I think it's Einstein. Oh, yeah. He was brilliant. He was brilliant, <laughs> yeah. So I've got a flat kind of base here. I feel pretty good about that. I've got some line that comes out protruding either side. It's pretty balanced. At this point, I could take some individual pieces and kind of cross them over, which looks really lovely. But that's about as big as I'm gonna go for mine. So just to give you guys a reference, we don't have to be making these huge elaborate things. Go big or go home, I always say. Go big or go home. Got it. No, I'm just kidding. Yeah, no, no, that's good. Some people, some people really love the really big armatures. I think that's fun. I've got a structure workshop coming up with Beth O'Reilly, and we were just talking this morning actually about um, all the components of the workshop that we're going to be putting together, and it's really exciting stuff. And armatures are a part of that. Well, I think you're always like doing so many different creative events too. And I think it just goes to show like your personality because you have so many different loves and I feel like you incorporate your design into all of them. It's really neat to see you collaborating with so many different people in the industry. So that's really, I, I commend you on that and always looking forward to what is the next thing you want to do. Yeah, that's kind of that avant-garde thing too, right? Yeah. Doing something new and exciting. Um, I never do the same design twice. Even this design, like we pulled it off the recipe and there was a picture. Just like the wedding designers that are out there or the event designers that are out there listening right now, we can grab a picture that someone sends us from Pinterest or some other inspiration site, but we're always going to kind of tweak it to make it our own, right? For sure. We're always making things cool. different. Well, that's true. That's true. It looks like Miranda might have a question. No. Miranda, we can't hear you. <laughs> there we go. Okay, so as I'm building this structure, how much is too much binding wire? Because I find myself really using <laughs> everything that I have just to make it sturdy. So what is your recommendation on... Uh, keeping the support structure with a, a, either a bunch of these bind wire or as little as possible, what do you recommend? Yeah, my recommendation is consistency is key. 
So mm -hmm. if you're going to use a piece of your bind wire and you're going to twist it three times, twist it three times the same way everywhere across the structure, because then there is repetition in what you've added. Anytime you add a mechanic such as this, this is our mechanic to hold this together. Anytime you add a mechanic, you want to make sure that you are consistent with how you are using the application. So my recommendation is just a couple inches of bind wire. Okay. And then I go onto my form. Like let's say right here, I want to join those two together. I go onto my form and I take that bind wire and I loop it around just one time. And then I twist it like a bread, like a bread tie. From your okay. Bread. So one, two to secure it and three, just to be sure. Ooh, so wonderful. I'm going to leave it just like that because the aesthetic of this form is so natural. I don't feel like we need to cut off this bind wire because it kind of looks like the curly willow. So we can just kind of leave it and you've got a great base started there. So once you've got your base, then you can kind of start bringing your tips together or crossing them over to give you a little bit more of a three dimensional form. Ooh, well, thank you very much. Thank you. So I bet you do a ton of freelancing, Jenny, and people are always asking you to come help them with their events. Is that, is that true? True assumption? It is a true assumption, yes. Yeah, I do a lot of freelancing jobs around the country, and it's a great opportunity to see areas and work with different shops. Uh, you guys have something coming up with freelancing, right? You know, we do. We're about to put on a, um, a survey for people just to kind of get a feeling um, across the country of the different skill set that people have when they are either looking to hire freelancers or what do the freelancers bring to the table. Also, we're like uh, trying to see as far as like wages, as far as what a freelancer would should expect to get paid, just to kind of create an industry standard out there. So would love for you to participate in the survey and anybody listening, we're gonna be um, putting that out this next coming week. So would love some feedback on freelancing and uh, gearing up for next month's masterclass, which will be a panel of people who specialize in freelancing. So thank you. Yeah, absolutely. Do you know, um, do you wanna, do you wanna let the cat out of the bag on who your panel is? Oh, well, yes, I, I could say that. Um, one person is still on the fence, so I don't know if I should mention her, but we are bringing Adelina Whitaker Rooney on. And if anybody um, is not familiar with her, she uh, is based out of San Diego, and she is a designer that she's mainly, um, from what I met her from, was doing florology a few years ago with David Tutera and Preston Bailey, and she hosted that workshop. So she hires a ton of freelancers and just is really great at teaching how to do that world. And then we're also bringing in Perry Donaldson, who, if you guys know Perry, she's just like queen bee as far as it comes to freelancing. People always want to bring her on. So, um, and then we have a third panelist, which we've asked, but they have, we haven't got confirmation yet. So I'll let you know, but if you want to join us, Jenny, we'd love to have you. <laughs> oh my goodness. I would, I'm always so excited to be involved with you um, at any chance that I get. So if you are looking for another panelist, I would love to join you. Count Jenny in, guys. Woohoo! Yay! <laughs> Yay! And that's how magic happens. You just you have to put it out there. <laughs> you really, you really do. And meeting all these wonderful people in the industry. I mean, that's another part of it, right? So yeah. I mean, this is something so fun too. And um just being able to design. I haven't held flowers in my hands for, unless we do a show going somewhere, I don't often bring shop flowers into details office anymore. So um, it's definitely something we're gonna have to change because all the girls all get so excited whenever there's these blooms in, but um, they've had fun processing because we're doing that pedal it forward tomorrow for SAF. And so we've got hundreds upon hundreds of bouquets in from our friends over at Jet Fresh Flowers sent us a bunch of things. So we're really excited to participate. And I know the girls have been processing flowers for days and days, so. <laughs> and you, you can kind of see all the bouquets kind of right behind uh, Miranda there. So we've been hard at work processing those, which has been really fun. Crash course for all these girls. And um, the, it's, been, it's been a good learning curve too on a proper conditioning. Let's see. Yep. Yeah. So you've got a great form there. 
So I would say now, because you've got the flat form, now go ahead and start bringing little pieces okay. from the form up and over so you can get a little bit more three dimension to it. Okay. Because then when we put our flowers in, we're going to be able to nestle our flowers into this armature. So some of these pieces, if they cross over, some of these pieces we're going to see through the center of the design, which will just bring the whole aspect of the curly willow from the edges all the way through. If it stays flat when we add our flowers, we're just going to see it kind of out the side. Okay. So we want to make it a little bit more rounded. But I'm to the uh, finishing point for my structure here. And if you guys can see, um, it is fairly deep. So it's probably about eight inches deep mm -hmm. in the center. And I didn't add a handle to this. You can add a handle while you're building if you want to. You just need bigger pieces of curly willow and feed them through just like you would your flowers and then bind that all on so you can have a curly willow handle at the bottom. But because we are adding our flowers, our flowers themselves are gonna end up being our handle. So we don't really need to add one. Okay. You know, in all, every time I've ever done bouquets, I feel like this armature, um, just using armatures came along just fairly recently, at, at least from what I, you know, you've probably always been doing it as far as like, um, you know, just organically creating, but I feel like what with Holly Chapel's egg that came out, I think a couple of years ago, it really kind of brought about this kind of conversation about it. Do you, have you always been doing this for years or do you, is it a fairly new kind of feature for you? Um, I've been doing it a lot on my own artistically, but to be able to sell this to a bride when I started my flower shop 15 years ago, it would be a really hard sell because okay. um, I think that it has to be the right bride that you would be able to see this armature. Now, like the, the egg, the Holly Chapel egg, you don't see that armature by the time it's, it's done. Oh. Both is done, right? It's true. It's true. But this style of armature, I could see so many people carrying something like this now. Especially for those boho kind of weddings or, um, you know, just that rustic kind of look too. It's just really nice. Yeah, that natural aesthetic, that kind of modern organic fusion that we have going on right now, which I think is very fun. I have to say, my um, curly bull is a bit brittle. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's okay. Yes, it's okay. So I think it's worth announcing that everyone that is designing their bouquet, or we're going to give everybody a chance for the next couple of weeks, I think. Yes. Um, the next couple of weeks, if people didn't get the opportunity to buy the flowers and do the workshop with us right now, that you can go ahead and you can get similar flowers to the recipe. We know not everything's available at the moment, but you can get similar things and the same kind of idea, experiment with armatures, and we'd like for you to take a picture of it. And we're going to have a place for you to load up your picture. And then in a couple weeks, we're all going to get together as a panel and we're going to judge who wins. And the prize is a brand new pair of Meraki floral shears that are coming straight from Japan. They are the newest, hottest floral shear on the market right now. And um, yeah, the winner is going to get a pair of those. Yes. And also some time on detail. So please feel free to um, send us your pictures. We probably should maybe post them on Instagram or something and just tag you and I, uh, Jenny T, and then details uh, for the submissions. But those shears are pretty nice. I've, I've seen them firsthand and I can't wait to get my hands on a pair of those. Um, I feel like it's a really, really great item. So kudos to you, Jenny, for, did you invent these scissors or how did that come to be? Yeah, um, so there was another floral shear on the market years ago, and okay. I purchased this floral shear years ago, and when I went to repurchase it, because I was selling it on my website, um, it was gone, okay. and I couldn't find the company anymore, and found the distributor and the maker of these in Japan, reached out to them 
found out that yes, in fact, the company was gone. And I asked if I could be the sole provider of these shears from their company in the States. And they said, absolutely, you can do that. So I went on and picked out six different colors. So they're really unique. The blades are all black carbon steel from the blade to the handle. It's a D-shaped handle. It's ergonomic. It's ambidextrous. It's not left or right-handed. Anyone can use these. And for the first time ever, there's three blade lengths. So the old ones that I purchased before, there was the small and the medium, but now we have the large. So there's three blade lengths. There's six different colors. We we're selling them in sets of three, a warm analogous set and a cool analogous set. And all the colors are named after flowers. It's very fun. Yeah, it's really cool. And you know what? One thing they should know about them is these are sharp and you can cut through like huge branches with them. Like I was so shocked by how it was, uh, what, you know, just how you could be utilizing them. Because you think you'd need a pair of garden shears to cut some of these things. And your scissors were like crazy, crazy cutting things. <laughs> Yeah, I think the, the stem that you cut was a big heliconia stem. Yeah, it was just so, and it didn't even hurt my hand, you know, As someone yeah. who kind of has pre-arthritis, I was like, ah, but no, it really worked out great. I'm excited. Yeah. I always say that we can buy all the tools in the world, make it easier on ourselves because we can't buy another pair of our hands. We can buy more tools. So you need really good tools, especially if this is your career, because that's what yeah, we're doing. For sure. Hear my well, you've got a pretty good, a pretty good set going there. I know. What else feeling? Good. The newbies, how are you guys doing there? <laughs> I'm kind of curious to see what you've got going on, Jenny, just to see. Can you see mine? A little challenging, but yeah, yours looks way better than mine. <laughs> no, they're all different and unique. That's what's so great about it. Yeah, I'm kind of digging it. We'll see how it's going to come together once it's all done. Keep making it pretty. So we've got all these little like nooks and crannies, right, in our armature, all these little spots that we can put our flowers. So that's going to enable us to make our bouquet really wide where we wouldn't be able to do it beforehand. So we're going to start with one kind of flower, and I'm just going to get going on the build on this. Is that okay? Oh, yeah. Okay. So I'm going to start with my wax flower, and I've pre-stripped my stem. So you can see that there's no greenery on this stem down here of wax flower. If you can do that, that would be great. Um, if you have never stripped wax flower before, you take these little offshoots and you're gonna go ahead and pinch that and pull it down and that's gonna come right off. You can take your fingers and rub it. But I will say, I love this. This is one of my most favorite fragrances in flowers. But if you pull it off and you smell the wax flower, it just smells divine. You wouldn't think that this little filler has such a beautiful fragrance. But yeah. I'm gonna take my wax flower stems and I'm gonna go straight into the center. And wherever I start that first stem, that's gonna be where my handle is. So make sure you put that first one in the center and then everything else you feed through this armature is gonna go right back to that part where you started. This is gonna be our binding point. And we're gonna hold our binding point, hold our hands fairly close to our armature. We don't wanna have it too low. We wanna have it up right next to it. So I always add one flower at a time until I have exhausted that variety. And then Jenny, it looks like Miranda's got another question here. As yeah. you're going All right, gotta remember about the mute. Um, so could you explain what is a binding point? Yes. So a binding point is where your flowers come together. So okay. this right here is going to be the binding point. Can you see that? Yes. So that's going to be my binding point. We don't want it to be too low. So a low binding point would be if I would held my flowers down here. So it's wherever your flowers, your stems come together. Good question. Perfect. Thank you. You're welcome. I didn't really clean my wax flower very, very well. That's okay. I, I, you can always go back after we finish the bouquet and clean it if you want to. 
Okay. It's really easy just to kind of pull those off. So as I'm adding my wax flower, I'm doing it in a very balanced way. Can you guys see that? So I've got a couple pieces out the sides. I've got a couple pieces out the front and back. So I'm just balancing it as I'm going through. I feel like I found this. So how did you enjoy um, SAF? Because I know I saw you there a few times. What was your what was your takeaway? Oh, I saw you on stage actually. We both got awarded with something this year, which was we great. Did. Congratulations. Congratulations to you. Thank you. Um, I really liked it. So for those of you that don't know, SAF is the Society of American Florists. And the convention happens once a year. We all get together and we talk a lot of business. And there's some great speakers that come. There's a trade show. There's an exciting variety show. There's a floral design competition. It's really a wonderful convention. And then every year, um, starting again next year, there's going to be SAF CAD, which is Congressional Action Days, where yeah. we all meet in Washington, D.C., and we actually go into the belly of DC and we lobby for our states and for the rights of what we're fighting for that year. Every year it kind of changes, but that's also a really great one. It is. I've gone every year for the past five years and it's really exciting to be able to walk Capitol Hill and just see the whole legislative process. I really didn't have too much interest in, in it before going, but now it's like, wow, they open your eyes to everything that's happening and how if you don't have a voice you won't get heard so we all have to be loud and proud so it's good yeah. but um, i really liked saf this year I was, it was really great to see everybody again yeah and it was a really condensed format this year it was I just two days yeah so you it wasn't hard. enough time so Jenny, should we use all of this wax flower? Cause I got one whole bunch. So do you think, I mean, I love wax flower. I could, I could use it all up, but um, should I, should I do that all at one time? Or do you suggest like uh, mixing up the flowers that you, that you add to the bouquet? Yeah, my bunch was smaller than yours. You got a beautiful bunch of wax flower. I think really it's everyone's aesthetic and, and what they really like, what their style okay. is. I think it's great to see this armature that we've worked on. So we don't wanna put it too full. We still wanna see little bits of this curly willow kind of poking through. So if you have a really big bunch of wax flower, go ahead at this point, kind of, if you're feeling the same way that Karina is, just put off to the side what you think may be too much. We can always come back and add it. But oh. the fact that we have it just started is really important. Okay. After we do our wax flower, Go ahead and start with your roses. I do one color at a time, again, just so I can know that it's really balanced. And if I want to create a focal area of a certain color or a certain variety of flower, then I have the ability to really do that with intention. So I'm gonna start with my lighter color. And the same way that we did everything else, we're gonna feed into this armature. And it's really great if you kind of pull your flowers down below. Some of them really far in to give you some great depth and some of them up a little bit, wider a little bit. How do you go about picking a color palette, Jenny? Because this is really a really beautiful color scheme. So how did you, you go for today's? What was your inspiration? Typically, I find nature to lead my way in my color palettes. I'll use the color wheel too, just to know my different hues, my tints and tones as just a guide. But in nature, if I find something that has a beautiful palette to it, like for instance, this wax flower, if you look inside the head of these little wax flower blooms, there's brown in there. There's a little bit of pink in there. There's the green. So that was the inspiration for this palette was that wax flower. There's times if you look at other flowers that have great interest to them, like Phalaenopsis, 
or cymbidium, really interesting kind of tones in the, in the throat of the flower. So you probably have, you know, five or six colors just in that and you can pick all of those up and your palette will always be spot on. So there's my whites. I've got all my white roses in. You see how some of them are out the side. So I'm using the armature feeding all the way through the side to my binding point so I can use the shape that I've created. If you have a wide one, I would say go ahead and do that. If you have more of a round form, then you can stay with that round form. So Jenny, as you're going through, um, and I, these are all very lovely. I'm so excited to watch you guys all do this. But um, so like we talked about floral substitution. So, you know, you substituted some calla lilies. I know that we substituted some items here at Details. Uh, how do you choose what you are going to substitute? How do you make those floral substitutions? That's a great question because that's something that we're all dealing with right now. Yeah. So thank you for bringing that up. Um, really the first thing is we have to stay on budget. <laughs> so we have to make sure that the price is comparable or we need to do a little less of something else. If we need to do a little more of a more expensive flower, that would be my first thing I would consider would be price color is going to be my second. And then overall texture is going to be my third. Okay. So I couldn't get the iris, the white iris. I went to pick them up and they had blue iris, but they didn't have white iris. So I was able to replace it with the Cali that I got at a really wonderful price from a kind of alternative source. So I was able to use this and why it's not the same as an iris, but that iris has such structure, right? It's those three petals that come out. It's an interesting flower. It's not a ruffly flower at all. So I thought that this was a really lovely substitution for that. Nice. Okay. Well, thank you. Um, it looks like we also have a question from Sam. Um, Sam, if you want to go ahead and unmute yourself. Okay. Can you hear me? Okay. So I have a question. Um, so I know like sometimes I go shove something in and then I'm like, I really don't like that there. Do you like, do you commit to the thing you put in or do you sometimes like to take out and say, you know, that didn't really work there for me? No, or no, absolutely. Trust, trust your gut. Okay. <laughs> trust your gut. And then go to your heart and somewhere in between there, you'll have the right answer. Okay. <laughs> Perfect. If you're not loving it, yes, remove it. Otherwise, when you get to the end of the design, you're going to look at it and go, gosh, I wish I would have taken that one thing out, you know? Yes. Yeah. I'm finding the value of standing now. I need more space. My stems are getting <laughs> sitting. Yes, absolutely. Well, and I really appreciate the armature because I feel like it's helping keep it together without me having to have a giant hand. Mm -hmm. Yep, absolutely. It really, it aids the ability to have a wider area bouquet. Can you guys see that? Not yeah. everything so tight, right? When you have that armature, because you can use the sticks themselves to keep your flowers in place, which is really wonderful. And the Curly Willow is great for this color palette, but there's other things that we could use to create armatures with, such as wire, of course, or red or blonde dogwood. Dogwood is a great one to use. Um, then there's other like grape vines or even wreaths. If you don't have access to any of these fresh branch material and you have a grapevine wreath that's dried and you've used it for decoration and you just want to give it a new life, you can unbind that whole grapevine wreath and it, you have amazing pieces of grapevine to use to make armatures with. So that's fun. So I know you talked earlier uh, about why you chose the calla lilies and really like how texture came into play with that. How important is texture? Oh my goodness. It's one of our principles and elements. It's, it's so important. It's, it's one of the most important things that your eye grabs to initially. Line is, line is very important. Your eye grabs that really quickly. Color, but texture is right up there with it because we gravitate towards things for certain aesthetic reasons. 
like let's say for instance in our homes whether it's a really sleek or calm environment or whether it's really boho and we have all plants and dried stuff everywhere texture is, is something that we have kind of in our dna if you will so i think that's one of the top ones for me thanks oh it looks like miranda also has a question as well yes miranda so I know that we've been throwing these trends around like boho, rustic, um, and I've seen those a lot just with it in details. A lot of brides want those uh, type of styles. What do you see in 2022, a large trend that's coming? Mm, good question. Was that on our, was that on our um, question board? <laughs> it was. It was? <laughs> that was good. Um, really, I can say that as I'm looking through trends and we just got done doing a wedding workshop in, in Dallas and looking at color palettes and everything where the whites and creams are never going to go out of style, but they're still going to be here for those of us that are so tired of doing it. I'm sorry. They're still here, but color is really starting to make a huge impact and lack of greenery. Interesting. Yes. And you notice you know, there's no greenery also, in any of these bouquets. I think there's also been an insurgence, maybe it's with the lack of supplies out there, but of dried product. I feel like I've seen a lot of dried elements. Um, oh, yes, for sure. That people have been incorporating. And also painted flowers, like more painted flowers than I think I've ever seen on the market. And I'm not hating them, which I always have always hated like those neon blue flowers but uh some people have done a really nice job of incorporating those colors like you said just so interesting yeah when we were at saf there was a a whole table of somebody that was painting and i I'm, pardon me I, I don't know the source i wish i did maybe we can find this out um it was a source that was painting playa blancas in a variety of colors some of them were like blue and pink like clouds um, some of them were just really interesting tones of colors that we already see, but all the way down to the center of the rose, um, I know because my mom stood there and opened up a rose <laughs> so she could see where the paint, where the paint was, but all the way down to the center of a rose um, that is the color. And that's pretty remarkable. And I know that you like House of Stems. We love the House of Stems. I think they're just so cool. They just came out with a bunch of new um, colors for fall. So if you haven't checked out them um, in the House of Stems collection, please take a look because these are like the richest jewel colors that I I don't think exists in nature. So it's really exciting to see them um, and how they how they compose them. It's just beautiful. Yeah, it is pretty remarkable what she's doing with Anthurium. If you guys haven't checked it out, I highly recommend taking a couple moments and checking out House of Stems. If anything, to educate what people might be walking in your door and asking for. Absolutely. Yeah, we love that. We think knowledge is power. So thank you for sharing that with us and also your expertise. Yay, look at that. So I have added all of my flowers with the exception of my tulips. So I'm going to oh. finish with my tulips and then I'm going to go ahead and bind this off. You'll notice that there is a little bit of my rose greenery. I keep that on it. I keep the top two bracts if they look really beautiful on my roses because it just lends itself to have a more natural appearance. Yes. So rather than iris, I got this lismachia and I really enjoy this flower. It is one of my favorites. So I don't know if it's exactly what you had in mind, but I got what I like, Jenny. No, that's, that's wonderful. Um, in the picture, the inspiration for this bouquet in details when you look at it, you can see that it's not just a flat mounted bouquet. There is a lot of interest kind of coming up, negative space, different varieties. So that's perfect. Curious if there's anybody that's watching that is designing along. Anybody are they doing it in secret, not putting themselves on display here for us? 
They're going to submit their designs later to win those shears, Jenny. <laughs> yes, please, everyone, after you get done with your bouquet, whether it's today or we're opening it up for a couple of weeks, um, to make a bouquet and submit a photo, similar aesthetic and idea. And we are doing a um, giveaway for a new pair of shears, which will be great. The holidays are coming. Absolutely. So I have a question for you on tulips. Yeah. How many times have I designed a bouquet that had gorgeous tulips, the placement was just perfect. And then when I come back in the morning, They've grown three inches and they are not where I place them. How do you avert this disaster happening, Jenny? <laughs> that was a great way to ask that question. <laughs> How do you avert this disaster from happening? Um, you, know, you have to almost remake that bouquet. It's just like, I don't even think if the bouquet calls for tulips that I even make it until the day I'm about to give it to this, the bride. That's what I would do for tulips or even if I'm using, um, any other flower that may be phototropic that's going to move, the tip of it will move like a snapdragon or a bell of Ireland. I wait and insert those into the bouquet the day of, so it's exactly how I want it. You can make the rest of the bouquet okay. with the morning of the event or the afternoon of the event. Then you can go ahead and just insert those kind of stubborn blooms. <laughs> so they're exactly how you want them. Yeah. I know. I love them. I have a love-hate relationship with them. And these are really beautiful. I don't know if you can tell, but they're like double blue. Mm. Yeah, they're just really, really elegant. So kudos to Pennock for helping us out with the flowers today. That looks really beautiful. How do you feel with your armature? Mine? Yeah. Um, I think I put the binding points a little low. So like they're kind of popped out, but I don't think you can tell that it's a binding point, like the twine kind of mixes in. And I am kind of not sure whether I love it. I kind of really like it. I feel like I made like a cuff to where the armature is like falling out around. Does that make sense? Yeah. I don't know. I'm still, still toying with it, but I, I'm happy with it. I've never done one before, so. I think the second one will be better. Next time I make one, it will be, it'll be like a little better, but. How's everyone else feeling that's making theirs? What you got, Samantha? Well, my hand starts to get tired. So I do for, I, I forgot how much my hand really gets tired. Um, so, you know, florists have very strong grips, even though I rock climb, this is like, my hand is very tired. <laughs> But I think it's good. I think I'm a very indecisive designer. So like my Libra mind is like put something and I'm like, oof. And then I'm like constantly taking in and out. Um, but I definitely am more of like an organic girl. So I personally prefer this over something that's just more perfected. So while it's a little more work for me, I definitely think I am appreciating the end result. Oh, I like this. Um, Jenny, so Natasha would like to know how she can purchase your shares. Oh, perfect. Uh, well, we still have the early bird sale going on. They are shipping from Japan on the 26th of this month. So until they ship, until FedEx tells us they're on their way, we're doing early bird 10% off. So the website is MerakiFloralTools.com. And there's the link, Natasha, so, uh, or anybody else who wants to go on there and pre-order, the link is there in the chat. So you guys can just go ahead and click on that and go right onto her site. Yeah. And we can also include a picture of the shears in the um, follow-up to this masterclass, as well as a link to your website, Jenny, so people can get that early bird savings. That's awesome. Yes, the first shipment is coming the end of this month, and we have 120 of each color coming and wow. they're already halfway sold out. So if you're cool. interested in getting a pair before the holidays, I would highly suggest getting on there and snagging some up for sure. Awesome, thank you, that was so great. Yeah, so mine is done, I went ahead and did the binding off. I just used my bind wire, but there is a waterproof tape or floral tape that you guys have and you can just bind it off right where you were holding your hand. Just put that 
either it's the tape or the wire on top and give it some twist or tape it on top of itself. Then you can take all of these stems and pull them down. And this is where the strong florist hands come into play. <laughs> you're gonna pull all of these down and then you're gonna take your clippers and you're gonna be able to cut all these stems all the way across. So then the bottom of your bouquet is nice and flat. If you have a Y or if you have a ribbon, excuse me, um, once you cut off your bouquet, like this one is here, nice and flat, then you can take your ribbon, your double face satin ribbon, and you can wrap that on top of your stems. I wrap from the bottom up. Mm -hmm. And then when I get up to the top, I will fold in a piece of my ribbon to the center and then push a pin straight down so you don't see any pins on the ribbon itself. It's nice and clean. How, well, in a hand tied bouquet like this, Jenny, how long do you like to keep the stems? I like there to be an even proportion of the top of the bouquet to the stems of the flowers. So like this bouquet that I'm holding here is about maybe 10 inches from here, from the bottom of the blooms to the top. So that's about the length that I'll do my stems. I just think it looks very neat and proportionate. Yeah, that's beautiful. Look at yours is standing. Good job. Thank you. <laughs> I'm actually surprised. I think it turned out. It turned out pretty. I, I am a very like, I hate everything I make Jenny. So <laughs> I'm such a perfectionist. I'm like, no, nah, but I do think it'd be gorgeous. I think a bride would be very happy to carry that. She would be crying. <laughs> Absolutely. That's I think it's beautiful. Very, very well done. I am. Um, yeah, but I, I feel like I need to get these tighter. So I'd probably wrap this with the ribbon and then recut it again. Um, right before I deliver it, I would say. Mm -hmm. Are there any other questions? This is so fun. How are how is my team doing? I want to see what they created. I think the up close version when I walk down the hall is going to be more telling. <laughs> I can't see any of their faces. <laughs> I'm experiencing what Sam is experiencing. The, the hands are just yeah. too small. I know, I could use a lot of hands. I, I used every, almost every bit of what you told us to have, Jenny. I was not afraid. Yeah, this is something that's very much the size of a bridal bouquet. So for this recipe, if you guys are all using the recipes, could we cut this recipe in half or even thirds for bridesmaids? I would say absolutely we could. Yeah, and be conscious of your cost as you're building out these bouquets. If you had to make substitutions, you still want to work at at least like a 300% profit margin or above. So I would suggest, especially if it was for a bridal bouquet. So. And especially being an armature too, there's extra labor that goes into this you're adding to the style, but you're also adding to the labor cost. So make sure that you take that into account. I don't think all that costly though. You know, it's very inexpensive, I think, way to achieve a great, you know, structured look. Definitely. And I think that it's just a way that you can also set yourself up from competition. I know that in our flower shop in St. Louis, we have a full consultation room that there is a ceremony structure always set. There's three different reception, pe reception pieces already set. So full linen, full toppers, full flowers, and the whole consultation room is done in silk. And be mindful of the trends. So we make sure that we're on trend with the silks that we're showing. And they look really good, high quality silks. But I would have something like this in my consultation room on the area that has more of a modern organic kind of feel to it and a bride would be able to now see this and she could really visualize what it would look like to do a curly willow armature in a bouquet and if you show it then you then you're more likely to sell it for sure absolutely how much would you charge for this bouquet if you were to do it i would not even go under 350 for sure okay you hear that florist 350 not any cheaper don't undercut yourself <laughs> Not for something like, like this, not for something that they can't go down the street to competition and get. There's no way that they could go and say, I want that 
you can make that. So you should definitely charge for your expertise and your skill and the time that you've spent to learn this, like the hour that we've spent here. Yeah, pass that along. <laughs> That's awesome. Brandy, do we have any other questions? Uh, no, but we've got some cheerleaders here in the chat. So uh, Natasha says, I love all the bouquets, splendid job. Uh, Merlin said, this is so much fun. So everybody's really enjoying, uh, you know, watching and participating in everything. So yeah, I think this is really fun. I'd love to plan one of these uh, again with you, Jenny. Thank you for your instruction. And I'm just so excited to see what adventures, flower adventures you take us on next. <laughs> and if anybody is interested, she is hosting um, a workshop, I think, with Beth. And uh, when is that? It's in a few weeks from now, if I'm not mistaken. The beginning of December in Dallas, Texas. It's a two-day structure workshop, and it's in a completely devoted, devoted space for our workshop. So we're able to really spread out and take advantage. And we're going to be working on armatures, like I said, we're going to be working on how we can build ceremony sites and reception pieces in a really balanced and functional way, but using structure elements that are a little bit more modern, a little twist on what we've seen for so long. Yeah, and I think it's just so important if you're interested in adding anything like this to your repertoire, you know, and you might be a little fearful sometimes if you can get instruction from a skilled teacher or just get a hands on process before you um, attempt it, it will help you in your sales process to feel confident. And the brides will know when you're selling this, if you're confident in doing it or not. So it's great that you can take a class like this and learn from the best. So we definitely appreciate you spending your time um, teaching and we, we love the education all kinds. So thank you, Je Jenny. Thank you. thank you so much. And thank you everyone who tuned in and joined and for everyone at details that made their beautiful bouquets. I can't wait to see pictures. Hey. Yeah, everybody snap some pictures of these flowers. We want to see what you create. And for the next two weeks, you'll be able to submit these to us um, online, however you want to get them to us. But we're going to sit down and select the best one that we that we get in for a pair of her beautiful Meraki scissors or shears. I'm so sorry, Jenny. Uh, we're going to edit that better. <laughs> um, pronounce it for me one more time. Meraki. You did it. Rocky shears. And um, we will make sure that someone gets their hands on them. And if you want to pre-order, please do that too. So thank you, Jenny, for a lovely afternoon with us. We appreciate it. Uh, we do have one more question though from uh, Natasha. So Jenny, um, how would you use tropicals in this armature? And then uh, she's also going to your upcoming workshop. She's already signed up. Yay. Um, I did a bouquet. Will you send me, Natasha, send me a um, direct message, whether it's on Instagram or it's on Facebook. And I did a bouquet with an armature at a presentation I did in Florida, and it was all tropicals. But I didn't do it with Curly Willow because tropicals are very heavy. At least the ones that I were using was very heavy. So I used a wire form, and I built all the forms for that presentation. So I can kind of share with you the behind the scenes of the making of that bouquet. That's awesome. Thank you. Thank you for the question. It's a good one. Awesome. Well, if there's no other questions, we'll close this out. Thank you guys so much for spending the last hour with us. We're really excited to see your designs. And thank you to my um, dedicated detailers who are putting their floral design skills to the test today. And uh, <laughs> I'm looking forward to seeing these bouquets up close. Uh, thank you. Look at Laura's there at the bottom. Yeah, She made a giant bouquet. This is her first flower arrangement ever, I think. <laughs> it I'm looks excited. Good. Yeah, really interesting. Oh, <laughs> uh, look at your Sam and Allison there too. I like it. Yay. <laughs> Miranda. Bravo, bravo, have fun. <laughs> Thank you guys. Have a nice day, Jenny. Thank you, you all too. All right, bye guys. Bye.